Okay, so I'm gonna to talk to you about RSC curves. So um, RSC curves is a very useful way to evaluate a classifier. I, I look at RSC curves every day. Anyway, so RSC curves is receiver operating characteristic curves, ROC, and they, um, they started during being used during World War II for analyzing radar signals because um, the, the Union forces uh, were trying to tune their equipment to detect Japanese aircraft. And you see if they, if they tune the dial all the way in one direction, then they not only detect the Japanese aircraft, but they detect a whole bunch of noise, right? There's just so many detections that you can't figure out which ones are actually real. And if you tune the dial on the equipment the other way, then the equipment just can't detect anything, right? So it not, not only does it not detect the noise, but it also doesn't detect the Japanese aircraft. So they had to be very careful tuning the equipment to balance between the number of real detections and the number of false detections. And the RSC curve plots exactly that trade-off um, between um, true detections and false detections, basically what happens when you turn that dial. Okay, so they ask uh, for a particular false positive rate, what is the true positive rate? Okay, and um, just to remind you, the false positive rate, that's the number of negatives that were misclassified as positives. Okay, the fraction of negatives that were misclassified as positives. And then the true positive rate are um, the fraction of positives that were actually identified as positives. Okay, so um, let us show you, um, I, I just want uh, to, to trace out an RSC curve by adjusting that dial that I was, that I was talking about, this sort of sensitivity dial on the equipment. Um, so here our dial is simply the, the placement of the decision boundary. So let's say we have a model, and that model is called f of x. And um, the decision boundary is right in the middle, and I'll predict positive on the left, and I'll predict negative on the right. Now, at this particular placement of the decision boundary, there are the true positive rate is it's, it's 7 out of 11, because um, there are 11 positives on the board, and seven of them are correctly classified as true as positives. Now, the false positive rate is three out of 12 because there are 12 negatives on the board and three of them are predicted, um, predicted to be positive. Okay, so then I can change the dial and move the decision boundary, right? I'm not changing the function, I'm just simply changing where I'm going to, where I'm gonna place my decision boundary. And then here, the, um, and then there, the true and false positive rates change, okay? So um, here it's three out of 11, because again, three positives out of 11, and then two, two predicted negatives out of the 12 negatives. And then there's some more, you know, I can, I can move this decision boundary wherever I want, really. And in particular, what I want to do is swing the decision boundary along its full range and keep track for every different place I could put that decision boundary, like for every tune on that knob, um, what are the true and false positive rates? Okay, so I'm gonna do that. So I'll swing the decision boundary along the full range, and then for each placement of it, keep track of the true and false positive rates, and then I'm gonna plot them on a plot, okay? So here they are, and I could keep going, right? And then in the end, um, I've plotted the RSC curve. Okay, the area under the RSC curve is actually, it's, so the curve is a whole curve, right? So you can look at the curve and say, oh, I'm gonna evaluate by looking at this curve. But if you want a summary statistic for the quality of the curve, generally people use the area under the curve. Now the area under the curve is, it's, it's really quite a good measure for the quality of a classifier. So if the classifier was amazing, then you would have seen then as you, as you move that dial, you would have seen all the positives before you saw all the negatives. So in that case, your true positive rate would have gone all the way up to one before hitting any false positives. And so your ROC curve would look, would look just like going up and then over, okay? And so in that case, your area under the ROC curve would be one. So the best possible AUC that you can get is one. Now, if you happen to get an AUC of 0.5, that would mean you're, you know, you, and, and if your, your RSC curve looks like this, right, so just right along that, that diagonal there, then um, you're in bad shape because 
your true positive rate is increasing at the same rate as your false positive rate. And you're saying, it's like your points are randomly scrambled. It's like, you know, you, you take the points, throw them up in the air, put them back down, create a, create a classifier. Um, and, and in that case, that, that's the case when the true positive rate would increase at the same rate as the false positive rate, right? So you really want to be better than that line. Um, that's the worst possible AUC you can get is 0.5. If you happen to get an AUC that's below 0.5 and an RC curve that goes under that line, that means you should probably flip your classifier upside down because there's something very badly wrong with it. <laughs> but it would be better than random guessing if you flipped it upside down. Okay, so I've gone over several ways to evaluate a model, so, um, most of them stemming from um, the four statistics within the confusion matrix. And in particular, um, the, the, the top three bullets are, are things you could compute from the confusion matrix, whereas the ROC curves are a little different because those use the function values themselves. And here you're swinging the decision boundary down the whole, um, you know, down, down the function values there. And then you're computing the area under that ROC curve as, as a measure of the quality of the classifier. Okay, thank you.